Hello and welcome to another episode of the Everything's Been Done podcast, conversations in cycling subculture. I'm your host, Dustin Klein, and today's episode is brought to you by the director's cut of the latest Everything's Been Done episode, The Millennial Vulcan, a story of a boy and his bike in a van from Japan. Ron Lewis, Suko Warrior, all kinds of mishaps and adventures you would ever dream of having in a small mini movie. Check the link below to tantalize your entertainment needs. Today's guest is an athlete, a model, a DIYer. He has a heart of gold. You can find him on Instagram at Mark Allen Alford. Please welcome Mr. Mark Alford. And welcome Mr. Mark Alford to, the, oh, oh. How's it going guys? <laughs> Mr. Botanist, Mark. Alford. Coming live from the Amazon. Um, <laughs> the Southern Californian Amazon. <laughs> uh, what is going on, Dustin? Man, just, you know, doing the thing, living life, staying Dude. away from humans. <laughs> yeah, no, same here. Good to see you, man. Um, yeah. So how's, it, uh, how's it up there? Like, like weather, except, you know, all the typical cliche questions. Yeah, no, I, I mean, these are, these are, this is called uh, conversational foreplay. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just dive into it. As I caress your hair, <laughs> the weather's been great. <laughs> it's I, like ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Put your hand on mine and let's go, sister. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. I, the weather's finally sort of just kick, kicking over, like just riding, you know, doing the thing. I don't know. It's cool to be able to like hang out with people like you through these things. It's like I, I love yeah. being able to connect because... I mean, we could have done it before, but it's that's one of the things, like a silver lining of the pandemic, I think, is it's almost like a reason to be like, oh, we don't see each other. Like, now we can't see each other. I know, man. And I, it actually makes you want to want to do it. Like, I um, I recently, um, you know, I'm, I, I've been a part of, like, three different cycling communities, uh, like, geographically. And recently, uh, we set up, like, a monthly Zoom like on Sundays oh. and it's called let's be friends again. Oh, and sick. Uh, so every month we're going to be meeting, like I'm going to hold the space down for like an hour and a half. And, um, I just like send this password and this meeting ID to our friends, um, that we used to ride together, hang out with each other, um, that we haven't seen in forever, or even just like pick up the phone just to text or talk. I was like, just send it to them. I'm going to hold it down. They can pop in no pressure. Um, and let's be friends again. So um, I think that this 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 situation is like definitely beneficial to like that shit. Like I I, I wanna and I I haven't been the best at it either, man. Like I've been super distant. Like I haven't called you in forever. So yeah, you know, I mean we're all busy. Yeah, with life, <laughs> we're all busy. You know? yeah. But you know it's like you know just like checking in or saying what up. So yeah, you know I'm I'm super I'm super excited about that and i think i might even do it with um you know your your sets of friends because like you know as you as you get older or as you go through life you have these like little subsets of friends and um it, especially if you're like nomadic like you you move a, you, you move a lot like around so um yeah and this this particular one is like with my indie friends which is where like i started writing um did you grow up in indianapolis for the majority. So I was born on Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. Oh, and what do they call yeah. it? Military brat or what is it? Yeah, mili- Air, well, Air Force brat particularly, like branch, but Air military Force. brat. So oh, I Terry Berenson too. Both of you guys yeah, Air Force. Yeah, yep. yep. So Air Force, um, which is why I look like this. I'm just like, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, I, uh, so I, I, I uh, was born there. Um, my dad's my dad's black my dad my mom is filipino um and oh, uh so i i i think what we left when i was five uh then we went to guam and then we went to great falls montana um and then i lived on base for um until like second grade uh, oh. which a lot of which i actually remember um and then my dad rode bikes so, oh really? Yeah, and I got to see like this Yo. hulking figure, and my dad's huge, man. My dad's like, he's like built like Mike Tyson, five like, eleven, two twenty five. Oh. So it's really funny to seeing Whoa. him on a bike. But he used to ride. He used to ride when he was uh, in the military. So anyway, um, that's so I had I had that like early age of seeing him like go out and ride his bike, and 
it kind of like was in the back of my head, you know, um, in that time, like you're still super young. Um, and then he retired, uh, from the air force. Cool. We went and moved in with my aunt, um, in Inglewood, um, for like six months. Random. And then he got a job at, um, yeah, culture shock. And then he right. got a job in Indianapolis with American trans air. And this is obviously before September 11th, before all the, all the, uh, like the restructuring and the, all the airlines going out of business. Um, so he, he was with them for a while and that's literally, I started in, I don't know, elementary school all the way up through college in Indianapolis. So oh. yeah, you can say like I literally grew up in Indianapolis. So it, that is really good. I feel like that you, like that chunk of time can be really fucked up for a kid to like leave oh, a school dude. and like go yeah. to a different side of the country you'd be like uh i don't yeah <laughs> dude for sure like your formative years i think those are super important but obviously like i was able to like experience uh you know different areas and different people and see like you know i went from like great falls montana where it's majority white and then like base housing you would see like the other black family and the other you know um a couple other filipinos and then you would move to inglewood and you're like culture shock you know surrounded by um, all black people. And then, wow. then you would go to Indiana and then it'd be the opposite again. But in, in the Annapolis, the city, it's pretty like, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of BIPOC there. So, um, that's like the, uh, the area where there's a lot of diversity in the, like the metropolitan area. So, um, it was nice, man. Like going up, growing up in Indianapolis, it was very weird because you would have like, anytime you go outside of the city, you're just in Indiana with everyone, imagine yeah. Indiana to be so <laughs> but if you're in like east east indianapolis or downtown or anything like that south side uh it's like totally what not people see uh, like in the media and stuff but right you know, which is interesting um but yeah that's where i literally started writing um oh. and i guess we can go into that like yeah um i think 2007 um 2008 um Right in between those years, I was like going from high school to college. And then uh, I'd be commuting downtown to work because I worked at this hotel um, in downtown Indianapolis at the time. And uh, I would like ride this Schwinn World uh, road bike with down tube shifters. And I got it totally. off of uh, Craigslist. I think Craigslist was like brand new. So everyone's like super sketched out. Yeah, but they're I like, got I don't know, they'll <laughs> steal your identity. You're like, yo, what is like, 20? It's super weird, but... <laughs> This dude, this like this old dude hooked me up and um and I had my dad come with me because I was I was still you know, I was like kinda sketched out because it was like in Speedway, um, Indiana. I don't know if anyone that's where like Brickyard and Indy five hundred's at. Oh um, anyway, so we went to go pick that up. I started riding, um, and then my dad was stoked because I was riding. Um and I was like, Oh man, this is cool. I really like it, but I was just using it for commuting. Uh and then I was riding downtown towards school one day and I saw this dude in like the skinny jeans and the yeah. small shirt and this on this like blue track bike, just like whipping it through traffic and like hopping and, you know, just like weaving. I was like, damn, that looks fucking cool as shit. So I was like, I started like huh. speeding up and sprinting towards this dude. And we were just like, I was weaving in with my road bike. I didn't have to do anything crazy. Um, but I was like able to follow him all the way to, uh, the monument circle which is in the center of our city oh. uh, he stopped he sat on the circle um what i learned known was called a uh, circle jerking <laughs> <laughs> where they like we're just like being jerks on this like you know obviously it's another term but uh <laughs> but no, we, would, <laughs> we would sit there on monument circle and just chill that'd be like our hang spot um so i i run up on this dude and i'm like hey man like what type of bike is that oh and cool I'm super stoked and interested um, it's like, hey man, I saw you. It was look, it looked dope. I was like, man, that's super cool. And it turned out to be Sean Wolf. Um, oh, I was. <laughs> that's so awesome. Who does King Cog? Yes, yeah. So Sean Wolf, I met him. That's how I met him. And uh, Sick. and it was like he was so nice, dude. Like he was like, oh yeah, man. Um, you know, he was a little like seen as like you know big black dude at the time. Um, he was like coming up to him on the. Oh, robot. were you more like? built up i was pretty like, big oh yeah. really <laughs> i've only so, known like, skinny mark so i don't yeah, know yeah it was skinny mark like super skinny in the bay area barry was like super skinny mark but uh but no i uh so i run up on this dude and i'm like hey man like i'm super interested and uh in that way um i mean that interaction led to 
me befriending him and, you know, me becoming friends, excuse me, uh, and, like, him showing me stuff. And I even got the same bike he did, uh, the Mazi Cotello. Oh, sick. Um, yeah, because you're like, this bike. works, like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I was like, dude, totally learning how to ride, uh, watching him and, you know, bootleg sick. sessions at the time with Phil. Yeah. Uh, right. remember those yep. yeah um so like you know just in the in the thick of it really um wait and, I, want, uh, I want to ask you yeah how go come ahead. your dad how come like how come partly i'm like how come your dad like lets you go buy this like crappy bike he you know you think you'd be like <laughs> here you go son this is what you need or no no no, you don't want that let me show you over here like, no he, my dad is old school man oh like, he's like he good does, luck with does, life yeah he does really well for himself uh but he he's very like uh i guess it's like the integrity and like the making sure that we are able to to hold our own and find our you know he'll help us if we really need it right um and we are we're kind of like we were kind of raised to like only ask if we really really need it but make sure we we try to find our own way and try to make it happen wow. um so you know i really didn't have to there's only like one time actually when i moved to los angeles the only time i had to ask my father for help and it was the first time in my life I mean, I'm in my, like my thirties. So, um, like it was, it, it, it's been great. I mean, the barrier was rough. Um, I yeah. probably wouldn't, wouldn't have had to, but, um, but the barrier is rough, but going from Bay Area to LA was a little bit easier. Oh, sick. Okay. Um, which is hilarious, but yeah, it's like, feels cheaper down here. Um, that's so, so funny to say. <laughs> yeah. I, th- <laughs> I understand cheaper, though. Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was cheaper, man. So anyway, um, yeah, so no, he he was like, "Yo, this is a good bike." Oh, okay. Um, you know, it's a good like first bike to learn because he knows that I'm just like him. I'm a tinker, so I'm gonna tear it up or do something to it. Or and I I did. I ended up like uh, messing with it, modifying it, and whatever. You know, did you make it a single speed? Uh, later down, it's life. Yeah, yeah. That's like just a so, common path. Yeah. So like back then, I, I think people forget about conversions. So right. totally they were so prevalent they were prevalent because it was like the cheapest way to get right. into it so you'd yeah. buy like a velocity like wheel set like a deep like a pair of dvs whether it's like single uh single fix or whatever and you just like slap it on there um and then hope for the best with the dropouts <laughs> yeah because <it laughs> or was you a, do the like, yeah it was like a horizontal yeah or you oh, do no it wasn't the, horizontal. it was like forward it was like angled. I don't even know. Yeah, it was like called. this or something. Anyway, <laughs> or you would, or you would do the. Uh, you remember the white industries, like the the canty. Like you would you would lace your hub up like a, it's like twenty eight thirty two spoke, and then you would like put the hub in there for a conversion, and you would like hit a uh, an al- You hit it with an Allen wrench, and it'll can it'll actually tighten the chain. Remember that? I don't know if you remember yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's like a um, it off center ish sort of a yeah, thing. Yeah, it actually, it. yeah, and it creates tension. Um, That's cool. And then, or people used uh, what was that? The uh, dropout the tension or yeah, remember. chain tensioners. Or chain something? tensioners. Yeah, yeah. So people use that in a really funky way to to make those work. But I mean, oh, they were totally. everywhere, dude. Like the whole group. And then um, at that time, you guys were just killing it on the West Coast. Um, and then that's like. All the all of the trends and everything that you guys created, uh, like slowly filtered by way of this small group to the Midwest and surrounding areas. Um, it was like, you know, you got the East Coast and then you got the West Coast and it would just like migrate oh, towards cool. the middle. And yeah. then we were able to see both sides, like like New York, well, obviously New York and um, SF, Seattle, um, and uh, and LA. So. You know, we were huge fans, um, <clears throat> which which is also hilarious down the road when we started like going to ride in other cities. So I befriend like I became friends with like this uh, group of just awesome dudes, um, primarily like Mike Pike, um, oh, yeah. Justin Trap. You probably remember Mike Pike. He he used to hit you up for like sponsorships and stuff like that for our Alley Cats. Yep. Um, like Monster Mash, etc. Yeah. Um, yeah, that dude's dope, man. You love that dude. Um, and then uh, Justin Trout, my other friend, and then we're like our minority part of uh, the group. So Justin's black, uh, Mike is Filipino, um, and then I'm half. Like I'm literally. Black. You're like I'm the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like right in the middle of those two. <laughs> so it was super funny. Um, and then everybody was everyone was white, but like the group was like super dope, and they're very like uh, very inviting and welcoming, and, and taught us like everything that they knew. And then uh, and then once we progressed, we vice versa. Um, so. 
uh, it was dope, man. And uh, then we started doing Mad Alley Cats. Oh, sick. Uh, we took uh, this guy named Chris Keller. Um, he had a, uh, no, Mike Pike had a 15 passenger van and Chris 15. Keller. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the big boy, right? The the big, econo- yeah, that's big. Yeah. Like the Econo line, like blah, blah, like blah. Some, like some, uh, well, because uh, Mike was in a band. So oh, he, had a, totally. he had a van. Yeah. And we basically did like a punk tour, but with like alley cats. We like Sick. we drove around the East Coast doing these these out of town alley cats, and we'd be just smashing like first dude. out of town. You know, we would yes. follow the fastest dudes, and then we would like make a little name for ourselves. Um, and in some some areas, not the best name. Like kind of. <laughs> I mean, it was a wild yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it was a it was a wild time. It was like wild west of pixies, but. <laughs> Um, it was dope. And that was all over the East coast. And obviously we didn't drive all the way West cause I was nuts, but, yeah. um, but that was a great time. And it was like so many memories with those guys, all the knacks that we've been to and, and oh, participated cool. in, um, all the politics with that shit. Uh, cause we were right. all like, we were all Jimmy John's delivery. Yeah. People. Like non messenger. Yeah. Going non-messenger. to the messenger. Yeah. And everyone's like, Oh, you're not really a messenger. Right. Like, I was like, well, in the future, you guys are going to be doing the same thing we're doing. And do you really you called it yeah we called it dude we we told everybody Whoa. and they were giving us shit but it's it's fine like we we love them anyway um we we're like big fans so yeah and it's just riding bikes too you're this like is riding you bikes. fuck what your job what your job is you know yeah like, man so you know and then like honestly i think the boston knacks is where boston knacks in 2009 is where like a lot of us were able to experience the the that big boom back then like in its Sick. entirety and before red hook crit started okay um, yep and like you know cog magazine urban yeah. bella shit like that right we we're able to get in those and and um a big a big component um i'm gonna rewind a little bit but a big component of my cycling experience um after meeting sean was him introducing me to the bike shop owner that he worked for which is joe cycles in um indianapolis and joe cox was the the owner of that place and this dude did um like did everything like everything everything you could ask for for like a person that did not have any opportunity to ride bikes he did like he was able to get me equipment he hooked me up he saw like what i was uh what i was capable of doing even though i was like full-time job full-time school and he was like dude you need to ride get on the road he got me my first road bike oh whoa cool um, like this dude i mean he went um like shout out to joe man because he was like joe and sean dude uh, joe and sean are the reason why i ride bikes and the reason yeah. why i'm still riding bikes and i'm in the bike industry so um those dudes were like instrumental getting my shit straight with riding and uh I mean, shit, dude, all the experiences they, they were able to, like, grant me and the opportunities is, like, awesome. Like, last a lifetime. So, shout out to those guys. Um, but, yeah, and then we, like, dude, like, it was just dope after that. And then, like, it started dying out when we all started getting older, um, which, you know, I don't know if you can speak on that. But, like, I remember you guys were kind of, like, winding down, too. Like, it was kind of evolving, right? Yeah, and I mean, nothing gold can stay. Everything changes. Like, it's just the... Yeah, evolution. The constant evolution, you yeah, know? The, it can't, you know, the party can't be forever because then it's you're just like an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. I don't but know. But we were, we, were we were still trying to do our... We were still trying to do our thing. So, you know, we were riding and doing our thing. And um, uh, Scott Harris, um, which is like the Cord Fed guys. Um, yeah. What that was group, that? So that group started coming up, right? Uh, oh, they like were like the, next generation. Yeah, and Scott was our age anyway, but he he was writing. Um, I think I can't remember he, when he was writing. I think he wrote an SF too, but he uh, he was in Indianapolis in Indianapolis, and then he started writing with this newer group of uh, of, of writers coming up, um, and then they started like he was um, like pretty good at film, cinematography, in my opinion. Oh um, yeah, started capturing these guys writing and. Um, and I, that, that, that created its own following and Tumblr was huge back then. So, um, it was all over Tumblr and like uh, right. YouTube, um, like, and, like clips and, so, and then was he yeah. doing, 
He did. There were you guys did like full videos, right? Yeah, like full on, like corn fed, Sick. corn fed two. Yeah, fed th- three, you know, there was like th- yeah. There was like four. I think there was like five of them. Um, I was in the fourth one because I was literally oh. about to leave the city after I graduated, and he was like, "Yo, you wanna before you wanna be in this? Yeah, before I go." I was like, yo, you want to be in this? I was like, oh, man, I haven't ridden like that in a long time. So at that time, I was like, I wasn't doing the crazy shit I used to do. And, um, you know, knees was hurting. <laughs> I, was doing, I was doing road. Oh, it was road. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I didn't want to, like, you know, I didn't want to get hurt because I was, like, doing, performing really well on the road. Sorry, oh. it's a garbage truck. Is that too loud? Mm-mm. Were you racing okay. road? I was racing road. Oh, you, uh, oh wow. So yeah, you did, so, like, transition into this other yeah. You went from like track bikes and then there was one season where Joe got me a road bike. Um, and then I went from a cat five to two in a season. Whoa. Um, and then like I was a two right before I moved to California, which is a mistake. I should have just finished my points in Indianapolis before I moved to California. Oh, once, interesting. I got, once I got here, man, holy shit. Like yes. it's another level. Everybody's insane. Yeah. Everyone's insane. So um yeah so like he was like hey you want to be in this um i'm like i'm down um cool and we, we shot it shit it only took a day and we were just smashing through traffic and, um it turned out really good a lot of people liked it um I'm, then, can you is it st- corn fed four yeah i think corn fed four yeah i think yeah if you, you text it. and he has like a bunch of other clips that he had from like unused footage um Sick. yeah it's- and like even he even like he visited one I, oh, okay so let me keep going. So he uh, he did that. We did that. Um, he put it out. It was dope. Um, then I graduated college. And at the time, I met my partner, Eliana, which, um, and we're about to, like, celebrate nine years on Tuesday. Oh, congratulations. Um, you, you met her. Remember we, yeah, uh, for sure. we had that uh, we, New Year's – I think it was, like, New Year's Eve, actually, or New Year's. We, we went to your backyard, and then we, like, chilled out, had a fire. Like, I think it was, like, a bonfire or something. I don't know. It was, like, a fire or whatever. And then you got to meet her and everything. Anyway. Yeah. So that's uh same. Um, and then um, she was, like, I want to get out of here in Minneapolis. And I was, like, everyone in Indy is pretty comfortable people. Um, totally. Like, and, like, you know, we're kind of homebodies. So yeah, we'll Midwest stay. vibe. Just, like. Yeah, we'll just stay there. Settle in and grow. Exactly. <laughs> family got the uh, yeah. goddamn uh, goat. Get, get the gut big. Get the family big. <laughs> I want a bigger truck. <laughs> Gotta work on my yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rolling coal. And, uh, um, but nah, like she was like, I need to get out of here, and I was like, um, I was like, oh man, I'm down. But you know, then you got this like, you know, Midwest like mentality ingrained already just by being here for you know through your formative years. So. So you're like, uh, yes, but yeah. uh, well, she was like, change is scary too. Change is super scary, but she was like, peace. And I was like, oh, oh. shit, I want to go with you. Perfect. So, yeah, so that she drug me out of here. But it was great because, like, man, I wouldn't be in the position I am right now and the experiences that I've had, um, I mean, meeting you in person and Garrett and um, all the guys, man, and, like, that group of people. Um, I know, that was again, a super rad time. Super rad time. Again, going back to those, like, little – Right. circles of uh, friends you know um so i i went i left indianapolis those that group of friends kind of splintered and split up and they all moved um oh, cool. i moved to california met all you guys um it was super rad we struggled a lot in sf um we Wait, tried so not obviously we tried to, to show it did but, you go to sf or berkeley or both um we never we couldn't afford that stuff so we yeah. were literally we lived in west oakland for like two years yeah totally. um and that was gnarly dude yeah um like, stressful holy shit. right it was stressful yeah. um i felt comfortable um yeah. just being who i am but then again it's like you know it's still like it was pretty rough it's just like, like kind of everything's like, on edge a little bit you know so all the time oh i even came home one day after work um and uh, Eliana was like, oh, you got to come home. I was like, oh, shit, what happened? Um, I, I roll up because we were live uh, pretty close to the bar, West Oakland bar. And I pulled up and my entire block is like taped off. I'm like, fuck. And there's police everywhere. Um, and that shit happened twice. Uh, oh, so apparently like some dude across the street got shot or whatever. So it was like, oh, it was pretty, dude, it was pretty gnarly. And then like you go around the corner and it was some like super, super nice ass house. So it was a very weird it was starting to become gentrified in that neighborhood. Right. Um, but at that moment, it was still uh, very much West Oakland. Um, 
but uh but we loved it i mean uh, if you just stayed to yourself and not really like get into that shit then you're fine yeah. um and that's kind of what we did um, but i always wonder about like you're like rolling up with these like fancy fucking bikes yeah dude and they're like but no oh, one really but no one really fucked with me though or they Honestly. didn't, or they're like, whatever a bike is like, yeah. whatever. I just gave them, well, not really. Like, you know, they would look, but I give them a head nod and yeah. they nod back and then cool. go about their business. So, cool. um, I felt comfortable in that, in that space. But, um, but yeah, I, I, you know, it, it got to the point where like, man, we probably should go. Cause like, it's only a matter of time for some like dumb shit to happen and we get caught yeah. up. So. Right. Um, or stray bullets or some shit. Well, that's funny that you said that because literally the day we moved, we woke up that morning. We, uh, we had everything moved out. Um, we packed up our last stuff in the car. And as we were opening the trunk, there was a freaking bullet hole in my trunk. I'm like, what the hell, dude? Like, we didn't hear <laughs> like, it. Who the, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, we didn't who's hear bullet? it. I was like, who's bullet? You know, we didn't even hear it. We didn't even hear it last night or anything like that. And we were like, where a car was parked, wow, we slept like, I don't know, maybe uh, 20 feet from there. Or, yeah, so it's super close and it's super gnarly because that shit, like, if it's dude. ball ammo, that shit can go right through walls and shit. So, right. Um, it was gnarly, dude. But, uh, but yeah, so after that, um, uh, Wait, around about, that time. What about oh, go the ahead, tiny go. house? Oh, we're getting to that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So around that time, I met all you guys, um, oh, like you, okay. DJ, Mike Manzella, Garrett Chow. Uh, well, I knew Garrett, um, but like I got to uh, spend more time with him, which is dope. Um, that dude's a freaking, like both the, all you guys are legend. Um, and then I met freaking Garrett. Uh, he came to NABS in Indianapolis at uh, one time. And we oh, got cool. Into, like, we got into COG Magazine because we had this like super epic roller, like gold sprints. Uh, match um you and him yeah dude it was dope um i gave him a run oh. for his money and there was like a technical difficulty oh. uh that was like it was super sus but like you know we were both competitive at the time and he was he just got done with the mash um uh tour of california oh so he's he like the, he was pretty smashed peaked but, out yeah yeah he's peaked out um i don't know how recovered he was but i was i was oh. i was giving him the business for a minute so um but no it was super fun so we got to reconnect um i met you for the first time i was stoked man um i was like oh shit this fucking dust is like (laughs) you know so i was like you know fucking fast right you know so i was like i was super stoked um and then uh then that that enabled me to meet like caesar and dj um mike and uh man who's uh oh gato man who's uh what's his name there was adam Adam. Oh, dude. Adam Schwartz, right? Yeah. Dude, that dude's a crusher, That dude. time was so cool. Like Jake Heidelbaum? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, dude. That dude's crazy, too, man. So that, this, that time was crazy. This was like this funny time for, at least for me, I it was like a transition into like road cycling. Well, before that, it was like oh yeah, How, track bike and commuting and just like more city stuff. And then I met all of you guys, and it was like... You guys were just like serious about road and you guys had good style and you were gnarly. And I was just like, <laughs> I totally was like, put my helmet on backwards. Like, OK, let's do this. Like, well, we didn't know. Like, I it was a surprise to me that you were like um, super into road. And like, you know, if, if that was the case then you played it off really well, because I didn't notice. Um, I mean, it was just but, like fun. it was the the people made that for dude, sure it was so much fun dude so because like, like sabrosa wednesdays and then we would meet up um on like what was that shit man like where was that at it was a cafe near uh the one of that one of them bart stations yeah i know Piedmont. i have the visual even too i yeah, can't remember so the name on the we corner. would meet up there and those were fun too just riding dude. with you um and, and then, like berkeley has epic riding just like oh my God. boom right there hill fucking i'm gonna, say something, I'm gonna like, say something controversial but oh bring it uh <laughs> we, not controversial but it's, it's like you know <laughs> cycling controversial yeah, yeah but anyway like i i think people have asked me all the time it's like oh man now you've been in la for two years like what do you think it's like bro like the bay area hands, oh. like, hands down in my opinion has better riding very very interesting i like this in my opinion and now yeah. For gravel riding, LA is destroying the Bay Area. Because it's because of access. It's access, and there's so much of it. Like you can literally get lost. Like there's so. I mean, obviously, because we have 
hella fires, but we just so many fire roads and little access roads that are legal that you can you can ride, and yeah. they're pretty. They're actually you can do most of it on twenty eights um, if you got the skills, and then thirty uh, eights you're 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 golden. Um, wow. Yeah. So the gravel riding here is dope, um, but over, if you're looking at like overall riding access, not having to deal with the damn PCH. Um, yeah, or just being shit. like in the Inland Empire, just like riding through downtown or fucking, you know, city streets Sprawl. and bullshit. Yeah. So you can be like 20 minutes, you're in like nowhere um, in Berkeley or, yeah, you do have to deal with the Golden Gate. Um, the bridge, yeah. But the yeah. right time of day, that can be not that can the be big dope. of a deal. Yeah, not yeah. a big of a deal. And it's shorter than trying to get on PCH to any of like these little tributaries along the way. You know, PCH, so, dude. There's so uh, much more traffic down there. It makes yeah. riding just like, oh of my course, God. You, you acclimate. But at first, you're like, Jesus. It's, I mean, <laughs> shit, dude. Like, I'm still acclimating. Like, you kind of have to. You have to ride so defensively, dude. Like, mad aggressive, so they can see you first. And then, like, when you do that, then they get mad because you're riding aggressively, so they can see you. And then they honk, and then they try to be like, they try to swipe you. Anyway. It's brutal, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but, wait. Uh, I want to talk about how you honestly are the funnest person I've ever ridden bikes with. <laughs> and I, I'm dead serious about that. I'm always like, man. Or I'll tell people, be like, dude, my buddy Mark is just – when you're hilarious because you, you have like these different like personas almost. But yeah. when, <laughs> when you're on a bike, it is just like – the goofy level goes to like oh it goes max bro oh it's so max. awesome it's like because like i think because i'm having a good time yeah. so and that's what i try to tell people like when you're on a bike dude like it's so fun and don't lose that like even if you're tr- if, you, if you're like oh i gotta do six by eight by 14 by 16 yeah. five thousand watts even when you're doing that shit dude just to have fun you know like you're on you're on you have there's it's a privilege to ride a bike in the in the way we're doing it um, yeah. so you need to recognize that and you need to allow yourself to like drop that shit and just have fun. Cause like, it's just fun, dude. Like you're able to, um, you're able to like go out and see things, see different perspectives. And then the people you're with, like, you're already like getting rid of that bad stress and like, you're already like in this like active, not meditation, but like this active, like wellness. Um, and like, sharing that with other people in that same moment, um, man, it's just like, it's so, it's like some spiritual shit. And then you like start making sure that everybody else has fun too. And that's like my goal when, uh, when I'm writing. Cause like, you know, I, I, I think of the, all these like little things that are goofy and funny to other people, but they're in my head all the time. So I'm like, dude, they're I, awesome. <laughs> and of course, like you, it's subjective, but dude, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, comedy, sure. Or humor, whatever. It's like uh, a co- not everybody likes country. Not everybody likes heavy metal. No, nah, like, no. Nah. But, but I feel, dude, I feel the crowd. You know, I feel. Yeah, the crowd. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good performer. So like, yeah. Yo, so but, I feel like, wait, but this know. dude is like singing, dancing, <laughs> cracking jokes. Like dance. It's it's insane. It's so much. Oh, it, it and really, smashing too. Just and, like you know, yes, smashing. It, but it really looks like to you. Like it's the, the riding the bike and how like all that fun is like such a manifestation of just fun and freedom. It's like this yeah. tool just like pulls it out of you and you're just like, ah, like, you know, and that's what, so cool. And that's why it's so concerning. It's like I had we talked about this on the podcast with uh, with Justin Williams, Dante Young, and we were talking about like, um, you know, the company I work for Rafa guys. So um I've been with Rafa for almost, it's going to be six years, I six. think, six cool. or seven years. Um, dope company. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of work to do still, but they're like doing, doing really good stuff. Um, and we're, you know, we're trying to hold them accountable and making sure like, um, uh, as far, especially recently with all the uh, diversity and um, topics and everything like that. So anyway, um, like our goal is, our goal, our mission statement is supposed to make cycling the most popular sport in the world. So we started talking about that shit and it's like the both representation and what it means uh, and what it is culturally, like it's not here in the U S and we were talking about like why. And we were, we went to like foundational and like how we want to 
share cycling with the masses because like i think once people experience it and get over that goofy like lycra and you know lens and all that other shit right. it's like they actually can experience cycling in its entirety and how like dope it is um but in order to do that um you still have to make it look cool and you still have to make it uh socially acceptable especially like you know with the stuff that we use and we wear to perform um and and we were talking about foundational in the sense where if you look at every other sport, baseball, basketball, football, uh, competitive cheerleading, anything, that shit is like ingrained into our society. Like yeah. youth programs, uh, middle schools, high schools, elementary, um, after school programs, et cetera. You know? So you have this huge pool of potential athletes and just potential fans and potential recreationalists that are in these sports they go through this like farm, if you will. Um, uh, they do high school sports. They do after school sports or AAU or some other program. Um, and then they do, uh, then that small percentage goes to on to do collegiate competitive sports. And that smaller percentage goes pro. But that large percentage either becomes recreational in whatever sport that they're doing or they're just fans because they participated in it either at whatever level and they just right. love it. So if we did that with cycling, obviously the biggest barrier in cycling is the access to equipment. Um, but if we can figure that out to you, that's literally how you do it. That's how you change cycling. And then being able to offer those, um, that foundation in um, communities where there's no opportunity, um, which is why I'm so passionate about it because if it wasn't for Joe, um, if it wasn't for Sean and these guys, like I wouldn't have access to a lot of opportunities that I've had um, or just like the knowledge or just like the being able to get stoked on bikes. Um, you know, obviously my, my dad maybe would have helped me out, but not in the same fashion as like, yeah, you know, somebody it's in different. the industry is different. So, yeah. um, you know, and then all the experiences with like, you know, shit you get being the way I look in cycling, it's pretty, uh, you know, it, it has its pros and cons at moments, but man, it's like, you get, you get all these like hilarious and not hilarious to me, but, um, pretty like crazy interactions. Uh, like with, what kind just, of stuff? Like, Oh, it's just racial shit, man. You know, from like, uh, other cyclists or from oh, yeah, drivers just, just, or both. all of it? everything, oh, everything dude, you know, it's just like the lived yeah. experience, like being, being the way we look shit. So, right. um, yeah, you know, just like living day to day, um, riding a bike, um, which is even crazier cause it's like a predominantly a white sport. Right. So um, does that, does it, does it feel like amplified? Like if you're on a bike, if you're a black man on a bike, opposed to like a black man paint, playing basketball, is it like more like, what are you doing? Yeah, and I'll give you an example. Um, 2013 Red Hook Crit, um, I was staying with Sean, and he lives in Brooklyn, um, and I was commuting to uh, do the heat for qualifiers. Uh, or just, you know, no, no, I was doing, uh, I was picking up my race packet and shit. Mm. So I was headed there, and I'm like dressed up, uh, not, not dressed up, but I'm like not in a kit, but I'm in civilian like civilian shit, and I have my bike, oh. and it's like, ridiculous fuji track pro with like concrete tubulars and ridiculousness um and i'm walking it has my fucking name, my on, name it. on it so and i was a goober i had my name on it but i know which is that. tight but i, I think I'm, it's I'm dope. foreseeing what your story is going towards yeah, so it's so like yo my fucking I'm, name is on <laughs> yeah so i get off my bike and i'm using my iphone um to like i was like oh shit i don't know where the fuck i'm going right and he, you know these two cops come up to me and no they start freaking way. yeah harassing my ass i'm like come on dog like i'm just trying to find where i'm going and he was like man whose bike is this i was like it's my bike um he's like you were uh he's like where you live are you around here i was like dude i'm like what are you talking about i was like i'm a tourist bro i'm like here to participate in a race um i'm from out of town um and then like I was like, come on, dog. Like, I'll just, I'll just harass my ass for no reason. Yeah. And these dudes were like in, you know, full cop and, and right, the fucking shit. Yeah. 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 I was like, come on, dog. So, um, yeah. So they like asked for my ID. They saw I was telling the truth. I was from Indiana. Um, they asked and then me, are you like, look at my fucking bike has the same name as the ID. Yeah. With my and picture they checked, on it. dude, they literally checked the name. They, they, they saw the name on the bike and they checked and verified it was my bike. Like, and they, I, it was, I didn't have to give them my identification, but if I didn't, I would have been in a worse situation. Like, then it's like escalated shit. 
Yeah, dude. some bullshit. So yeah, dude, it's like I don't think I would. I don't know if I'd have been bothered if I was anything else, but um, you know, I was just like, come on, dog. So anyway, that's an example of many examples, but right. um, that one that one is like a uh, classic case of like, is that your bike? That was like the that was like the funniest, not the funniest, but it was like it was pretty funny to me after. <laughs> It's like, is that your bike? It's like, it's got my name on it. Yeah, that's you know? the best. But then again, my, but then again awesome. my name is Mark Alfred. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, your name Marcus? I was like, nah, dog. My name's not Marcus. It's Mark. Um, you know, and like, it's, it's, it's to the thing where it's like, just because I'm black doesn't mean my name is Marcus. This is short for Mark. Um, you know, so it's, it's like little, like, little tiny, like, uh, like micro, uh, yeah, um, like all the they're like little needles. It's just like yeah, this one, like that one, bite, this one, like, that one, this know. one. It's like, come on, dog. So you know, and that goes back to us like wanting to make sure that if um, if we try to rally these the cycling industry into um, building a sport in this sense, um, that's how you change cycling, um, and you know, and that's how you increase uh, BIPOC and women X um, representation in cycling is to making sure that they have access to the sport and they think. They see the sport. They see people that look like them in the sport yeah. that are fucking smashing, and uh, you know then they're like, "Oh shit, that looks cool. I want to. That's dope. I get to meet these people. Like the access to athletes is like way better than other professional sports." Oh, and totally. Then, and then it's just like you know it, it snowballs and it has so much potential. Um, and I think that's how you make it look cool, man. Like honestly, uh, you know, white people love black culture. Like, yeah. you know, that's it, it's that's like fact. So I mean, if you look at like how we made um any other huge major sport super popular and cool looking we could do the same shit with cycling so like if we can get the chance give us a chance and that was like that was my thing with the whole like with the legion of los angeles team and like um being stoked for those guys you know um because i remember um oh shit that's like Anyway, let's put a pause on that. Yeah, we'll, sure. we'll, we'll go back to wanna, we'll go back to the tiny home, but um, I'll keep, I'll keep <laughs> going. It's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, racial like, equality, uh, tiny home. Um. Tiny home. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so like uh, I was very blessed to um, <clears throat> to like interact with Justin at at the perfect time where um, our missions kind of aligned as far as like. Um, he was he had this breakout year and he just destroyed everybody by himself, no team. And also so awesome. sponsoring him. And also Which is like the whitest of the white. Whitest of white, yeah. So But you know, legit man, product. So you know legit product. Um I'm not trying to, you know. But uh but anyway. <laughs> uh you know, Rafa, it's good. Oh uh, yeah, way better. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but no, like, you know, he was, he, they were, they were holding it down for him. And, um, and I told him, I was like, Hey, are you going to be like, what are you doing next year? And he's like, I don't know. Um, you know, he's like, I don't know. So I was like, yo, college boy. And then we started talking for like forever. Right. So we talked for a while yes. and we, uh, I was like, you know, like just, you know, pitching, 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 yeah. because I realized, um, that this dude, um, I've only met him once and that was during a race in tour of America's dairy land in Wisconsin. And that was like oh. being dropped in a road race and not having the ability to talk because we were both dying and try to chase back. Well, it's anyway. you're racing. You're like, Hey man, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> so it was like, we got, we got, uh, it was at tour of America's dairy land. I was on the, the road race and I got, I got dropped. I got separated. Um, I was like, fuck. So I looked, I looked around me. It was like nobody around me, it's cars and shit. And then I looked back and it was Justin and oh. his Mexican nationals rider. Um, and I was like, dope. I was like, this is, this, this is my like toe back to the group. And I looked and it was fucking Justin. I was like, oh my gosh, it's just Willie. <laughs> Cause at that time I was like, we all knew him cause he was a fucking legend. He was a legend already. Yeah, and then I was like, oh my God. It's like, yeah, I get to, I was like, oh shit, dude, you're just, you know, I was trying to play cool. I was like, oh man, you're Justin. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, He's like, yeah, man, let's go. So, um, <laughs> so I hopped back on and we both made it back to the group. But, um, oh, but cool. no, it's, uh, you know, and after that I really didn't like see him cause there was just, you know, racing, like stage races are pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but anyway, fast forward, um, that was my only a- interaction with him. And after getting to know him during that short conversation um, or just getting his energy and his, his demeanor and his, like, his, his mission, 
um, I told them my mission and they both aligned. Fuck and yes. then um, I made sure that uh, whatever pitch deck he had, um, I would I would for sure get it to the right ears. And then that's how we've um, managed to, to, to get these guys uh, supported by Rafa. Um, and that was just like the first page. Um, and then Specialized came aboard. And then uh, now the bigger goal is to make sure that these guys can increase representation and being able to have the support where they can do a women's team or women X team, oh, um, yeah. cross team, um, making sure that they are able to hold their sponsors accountable um, as far as like representation and content and anything. Right. Um, sponsorships, you know, so um, they, I mean, they want to change cycling and I think a lot of people are on board um, and uh they're approaching it in a way where it makes sense and it's just right. So um, that's that's what I'm. That's kind of like the super quick, uh, you know, line of my cycling experience um, from uh, Indianapolis to all over the East Coast to um, Berkeley, SF to here. Um, and actually, you know what? The funny thing is, when I was in Berkeley, you. Um, you hit me up with for a photo shoot and yeah, I feel like we, we, did a we shot the we did we did a few but the first one you did um like you got me in a photo with the the airflow and then after that we did the conquer kit in the orange yep. and yeah yeah that, that was, one oh, that was like man. legit my first photo shoot right and uh that actually, really wait for re- yeah and that actually enabled me to do all these other photo shoots dude like you hooked me up like everyone saw that shit and they're like yo get this dude on the you know so i started booking work it was dope so thank you dude Um, that yeah (laughs) i actually have a note here we did remember when we did the one in the headlands and it was like a lifestyle shoot yeah yeah but i remember like you I was like, how the fuck is this guy be like, he'd be like, ah, blah, 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 blah. And then the camera would be like, photo time. And then Mark would be like, blah, 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 blah. I can't even fake it. Cause I was like, how the fuck is this dude like turning on like model face? Just like, yeah. So then, you know, like this and that, like, oh, dude. I was like, how do you do that? What is that? <laughs> what? And then they find out the first time you model was like, Six months before that, I honestly thought you were like uh, a legit, like, oh, is this thing I did? And like, you know, nah. oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me let me backtrack. So in college, before I started cycling, I did do some like um, there's this thing in Indianapolis called like the Black Expo. And it was like a, a annual thing where um, at the convention center in Indianapolis, like uh, black people for, will uh, congregate and it would be like, you know, you learn your history and blah, blah, That's blah. Sick. It was really, it was really dope. Um, and I was like, man, looking back at it, I was like, man, that was dope. Um, they still do it now. Anyway, they had like runway shows and I, I, I legit did like runway modeling for oh. these like boutique couture, you know, so super, super fun fact about me. But did uh, they like coach you? No. Nah, they like, dog, dude, cause you're just like, <laughs> wait, can we do it? Can we do it? Can we? Let's get let's get model face. Oh no, dude! <laughs> you'll you'll see it like periodically during the um, during the video, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but no, like it was um, uh, yeah. So that was like a little background, but yeah, it's it's pretty funny. But yeah, dude, if it wasn't for you, dude, like I wouldn't have booked all these freaking. Um, maybe it would have happened. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, that was like the first exposure that I got, and then I started just booking hella shit. So it was dope. Yeah, and then Raffles awesome. and then Raffle was like, oh shit, um. You know, put this guy in, and I worked for him at the time. Um, I was like, yo, I'd be super down because the only other guy, only other person of color in Rafa anything was Leon. And that's the guy that looks super different than anybody else on there. He's uh, biracial and he's he's all tatted up. I don't know if you've seen him in Rafa. Oh, yet. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, mm-hmm. that dude. Bigger so, dude. Um, yeah. So all tatted up. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yo, that dude kind of looks like me. It's just, I don't have any tattoos. Oh, I got one, but I didn't get tattoos. Uh, and I was like, that dude looks dope. Um, and again, representation, when you see somebody that looks like you or relatively, like it, it makes you stoked and you like, you look at what they have on um, mm. and then it makes you like want to do whatever they're doing um, in a certain sense or at least be curious. Yeah. Check it um, out. Yeah. Check it out. So, um, you know, and I was like, yo, I got to get into this. And, you know, I kept on, Put my name in the hat and um after they after i started working with you guys man they started seeing it and then uh 
and I started book, and then I booked those guys, and then I started booking other shit like National Workshop, all this. Oh yeah, I forgot I about shit, that. I did shit for Google and Levi's. Wow. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, dog. I did some. That's uh, so it rad. Pretty, it's pretty dope. Um, yeah. So like you know. Oh, and then then uh, one cool thing too in uh, in uh, the the SF or Berkeley days. Um, is the uh, uh, or East Bay days just because I lived in West Oakland um, and North Berkeley, um, but just yeah, East Bay, East Bay and SF days was like the the whole thing with uh, Andrew Lowe. That was dope. Oh dude. yeah, yeah. He uh, he he hooked it up too, man, and uh, allowed us to like have this team where um, it was like uh, obviously it's it's nice to win, but he was more so uh, focused on like. Uh, showcasing how fun it is to be on a team and showing like what these road bikes are capable of and showing a different side of like cycling other than trying to like win, 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 win. Yeah. Um, like obviously it'd be nice to have, yeah. Yeah. Obviously it's nice to have crushers, but a lot of our guys were like, you know, we're pretty good, but we weren't like the best at all, but we were just like very known in the community and yeah. um, on social media and stuff like that. So. And a um, lot, I feel like a lot of times with those like super elite athletes, and I I feel like I've seen this across a lot of disciplines. Is the more performance goes up, the more personality kind of goes down. Obviously, yeah. not not all cases, but it, yeah. it's, I've seen but generally, it enough. Generally, it's, it's it happens. So yeah. you know, you get a team of crushers. You're just like, <laughs> you're like, uh, what's up? <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> 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 but uh, <laughs> Take a tap. Take yeah. a tap. <laughs> um, but no, like that's like that's literally a legion, man. Like these guys are like they're just like unapologetic. They're raw. They're super real. They keep it real. Um, and they'll like they'll let you know what's up. Like it's yeah. dope. Um, and like you know, and I'm I'm guilty of it too. I'm guilty of like uh, you know code switching and at times and like what's acting. The, what's code switching? It's like. Um, like I would act different with my black friends as opposed to like talking to white people. Um, yeah, that's like a, a gist. Um, and I've, you know, I've definitely been guilty of it and it's tough. Cause like, as you're growing up biracial, like me, man, like it's like, you're kind of uh, socially forced to pick one, which is kind of dumb. Interesting. Um, it's super dumb. Like going through high school, it's like, man, what are you like? You know, what are you? Or I get right. so many, what, what are you? Is like the most ridiculous thing yeah, I in, get in Indianapolis too. Oh or yeah. Was your high school Any, anywhere in oh, high school? Yeah. High my high school was like black. Oh, it was. Oh, uh, yeah. It was my high school cool. years. My high school years were dope. Um, Sick. But uh, but but still, you would get. I mean, you get that in in uh, in my own. You get that internally, um, or in your own race. So, um, like, right. like and everything like, like that. Black people oh. be like, you're not totally just. Black. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, being on. being as light as I am, you know, and there's like there's a lot of jokes to that too, um, and they are pretty funny. But then again, there's they're rooted in like some pretty deep shit. So yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, man, it's a, uh, you know, it, it, yeah. So, uh, that's why I like about these guys, and they just they're just themselves, um, and it's like open. It's it's teaching me to uh, to kind of like. Uh, I guess unpack that in a sense to and just to be myself more. Um, yeah. Not that I ever like was not, but um, yeah, but, but like yeah. A, a safe space to just kind of be who yeah, you are. Yeah, just to be who I am, you know. And um, and you know, I hope more people see that, um, see more of like actually me, and not me like hey, blah, 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 you know. So right, yeah, um, and anyone can tell when someone is. I, I mean, genuineness. When someone's genuine, yeah, yeah. it's attractive. Of, yeah you know, exactly you're just like damn yeah. this person's fucking legit their yeah. genuineness is trustworthy it's fun it's just like you want to be around it but then when people build up these things and it, it can be for whatever capacity of like not wanting to look dumb or like sound weird or whatever it there's this like stiffness to it that i, know, I, I mean no fault to anybody it's it's a protection right like people yeah. are doing those things we all do those things too so yeah, I mean, life work to just try and be as much of who we are as we can be. Yeah. Like, yep, I know exactly. what the fuck I'm talking about, though. Like, no, I mean, dude, no. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm definitely no, like, educator or anything like that. But I, I could speak from my lived experience. Um, and hopefully, totally. it, you know, translates and relates to other people. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, uh, 
yeah so i i was definitely like through and it sucks because like i shouldn't have to be uh blessed in a sense with uh being surrounded by people that allowed me to have these opportunities in order to participate in cycling because i've met so many people um like me who don't have the uh who weren't initially afforded these opportunities um that don't surround themselves with the, or don't have access to these people to in order to get these opportunities so they're just like how do i start cycling and i don't have these people around me um, like are you saying specifically like legion or like sean they're just just us no 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 um like black people black people yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. or just like or just any person of color um right and like i totally. learned like i'm learning in the my partner she's a um a wellness anti-racism um uh, educator uh, decolonization educator. So I get to learn all these like terms from her oh, cool. and like, like BIPOC and women yeah. X and get to know like BIPOC is black indigenous people of color. Yep. Um, and What's that's, women X? Women X is like everything, women, including anything, um, if you identify, et cetera. Um, oh, so trans yeah. is women. X. It's like a blanket Correct. for all. It's, so there's not, cause there's a lot. Yeah. That one. You're yeah. Like, cause you don't, yeah. Cause you don't want to like, you know, you want to, you want to be inclusive. You want to be, you know, so that term, um, um, and by, we're not trying to be offensive as far as blanket and just, you know, saying that, uh, they're all the same. They're not, but they're, you know, you want to make sure that you include everybody. Right. Um, it's a way so, to include. Yeah, exactly. So those, uh, and then with, especially when you're speaking, so, you know, you're not leaving anybody out. So, um, yeah. So yeah, man. Um, Oh, that's. that's- that reminds me of, have you heard of this thing called the Black Cyclist Network out of the UK? Yeah, Manny. Yeah. That shit is fucking awesome. It's dope. And he, like, he grew the channel, um, well, obviously after, it sucks because, like, a lot of people blew up after this tragedy. Right. And it, it really sucks because, like, for a lot of people that have been doing this shit or been trying oh. to help uh, with the diversity and everything like that, um, you know, and then... And then, like, dealing with, like, tokenism and shit like that, like, you know, their whole life or, um, you know, especially, like, a lot of the, the prominent people within cycling that are BIPOC, um, you know, I, I kind of like to throw my hat in there. But, like, the bigger people like Bahati and, and Justin and Corey and, um, uh, like, Corinne Rivera and every, everybody like that that, uh, that has to deal with, like, are they being tokenized or anything like that. Anyway, um yeah, it's just like it's it's uh I just lost my train of thought. What well, were you saying? Really? I brought up Black Cyclist Network because it's Oh like, yes. It, so it, yeah, so he's 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 able to he grew he grew that super quick, right? So he he started and I was like, yo, this is dope. So I started following him and he asked me to follow. I was like, I'm totally following this. Sick. Um and it had like two hundred followers and then it was like five hundred and it was like super slow. And then after this all happened, he started to grow more and more and more. Um, and then after this happened, it just blew up. And now he's getting like, uh, I think it's getting the recognition it deserves, but it just sucks. It shouldn't be like that. Um, but, but, what, uh, but what they do is really interesting. They like, basically, it's, it's exactly what you're talking about. Like a way to have a platform for BIPOC that's like maybe interested in cycling, but like don't know. Yeah, because cycling is fucking weird no matter it's what color weird, you are. It's weird, dude. Yeah. <laughs> especially if you're not white. It just, oh, dude. I could only imagine. Like, yeah. But it, what Black Cyclist Network does is it's basically this door. is like, hey, we want to show you, like, we look like you. We're from similar places. Like, this is how you can start doing this. And then you can find the love for it and then just be in it. Exactly. It's, it's this great, exactly. like, it's like, a, here, let me, here, let me give you a, a hand up. Dude, especially over there um right because like when they turn on the tv they see that they get the tour on the tv other than us we have to look for it here in the u.s but when right. they get the when they get the tour it's like uh just a bunch of skinny white dudes and um spanish people um or you know no offense to anybody else but uh and then you see like the colombians which is like the darkest thing you got in there um and then you have some of the african cyclists like that were on team dimension data um and i think that team turned to something else i can't remember they always um, switch into like a different bank or like a different something, thing. man. It's like something. A anyway, company. that structure needs to change, and we talked about it in our podcast too with, with Justin and Dante. Oh, cool. Anyway, um, yeah. So, 
Yeah. So they're doing something super dope and I need to get more involved with those guys. It's just tough because they're across, you know, they're six hours um, difference and yeah. it's across the pond. And I want to do uh, something with Manny for sure, because I think that um, if we can like have a unified um, oh, message, awesome. you know what I'm saying? Like it could be, it so could be more, just, yeah. yeah, it could be more impactful um, in my opinion. And like, it kind of grew from like me, um, just writing and trying to, yeah, you know, not gonna lie. I was trying to, I wanted to be a pro cyclist. So yeah, when, I was, when I was going though. up, I was like, yo, I'm a, I want to be like fucking Kyle Murphy. Um, sick. and Kyle Murphy did it. Like he's our, he's our fixie hero. Um, and for those of you that don't know who Kyle Murphy is, uh, he was like just a fixie kid. I got, um, uh, surrounded with mash. Oh, that's my dog. You just go. <laughs> Sorry, she's like crying. I don't even hear that. Oh, we anyway. can't hear it. Okay, so Kyle was like, um, uh, fixie kid, uh, surrounded by mash. Everybody started to know him, and then this dude just straight up like blew through the ranks and went freaking domestic uh, pro. And it was like yeah. so dope. You know, he went from like uh, riding his track bike to wherever Santa Cruz and shit, and yeah. just racing alley cast, Red Hook, and then he's he's now a pro. And it's cool because there's a couple of pros um, that came from that Red Hook or that came from uh, track bikes that went on to be pro tour or pro. Um, and that's yeah, dope. That's so that's what I wanted to do. Um, that's so sick. But man, it just would, didn't happen. Um, oh, but it's I, so gnarly to make it's so, any It's so gnarly, guys. Like, and like the support you need, you know? And then also, right. like, time. Kyle, Kyle had the opportunity too. Like, um, like that's, it's just the time and the money uh, because you can't really work. Like, right. Um, we're trying to uh, organize a like a docu series on showcasing. Um, shout out to Mark Marino, uh, working class athlete. Yes, and how that looks in American cycling, especially Sick. for BIPOC. Um, Sick. So um, we're like on an initial stages of brainstorming that, um, and this is again, this is like me behind the scenes of all this. Um, as far as like with everything going on, I'm like more so behind the scenes rather than like in front of cameras and shit. But I'm I'm super down to do that. Whatever I got to yeah, do. Do they ever? Like, how come you're not in front of the camera? That was one thing when you were working at Rafa, and I was like, why the fuck aren't they shooting this dude? <laughs> like taking. I'm photos. not. I don't really care about that. But what I, I care I, about. Yeah, but yeah. you're just like you've got the look. You live the life. Like it's it's you're like a resource that's just there. I don't know, man. But uh. <laughs> You guys anyway, blown it on this man. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, my goal is to help do whatever I can to to increase and help with uh, diversity, inclusion, and representation. So um, I want to highlight how, because from personal experience and the people that are trying to put this together, um, they experience too how hard it is to wake up in the morning, five forty-five, six o'clock, train for three hours, three to four hours. Um, and then go work uh, an eight to 10 hour shift and then get home, try to be social with whoever you're with, partner, friends, family, and then go to sleep, uh, food, um, right. having good sleep, and then waking up and doing that shit all over again and performing in all of those areas. So, and these guys do it and it's incredible. And the motivation and the determination to do that shit is incredible and is raw. Yeah. And I want to showcase that to um, show the cycling industry is like, Hey man, these people need support. If you're trying to grow a sport and trying to increase these, uh, the, the opportunities for athletes, because, um, because it's hard, man. You got, you got a lot of the pro tour athletes and the athletes and they'll tell you straight up, like they, they were able to stay home with the parents and they had parents that were well off and they were able to support them. And, um, I mean, obviously that's a generalization. Uh, there's people like Phil Guyman that who had to figure out, um, on his own and didn't really come for money or anything like that, but he made it work and now he's doing his own thing. Um, shout out to Phil. He's a good dude. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, so it's like, it's a, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of shit that we want to show and uh, to make sure we, we, uh, put in front of people and especially the cycling industry. Like I want to make sure people in the cycling industry watch this. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's my deal, dude. Like I'm, that's, I'm all for it. Um, and I want people to, uh, yeah, I just want people to 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 shut up, listen, and and do the work, man. Do like try to work and try to work towards collectively um, 
to get this thing going and make make cycling dope for everybody um, and make it comfortable for everybody. Um, and it doesn't mean that everyone has to be a freaking pro tour road cyclist, but shit, like if someone is on a bike, man, don't make fun of them. You know, <laughs> oh, do you why? Or uh, oh shit, yeah, you ain't got oh. no car. You ain't yeah. got no car. Um, it's like yeah. shit. I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Shit, Lance Armstrong. It's yeah. like it's the only cyclist, you know. Mm-hmm. I do it's from like two decades ago. Yeah. Um, well, literally, actually. Um, but no, so she's going to hold me. Uh, <laughs> I was like, damn, dog. So awesome. anyway. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, it's been a wild ride, man. And um, again, like just blessed to have you guys uh, help me along the way. Like shit, dude. Oh, just like shout out to Garrett child, dude, man. Sorry. Yeah, what's up? I was like, oh, totally. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, you ready? Wait. Yes. Oh. What's up, Corbin? Oh. He's just chilling. Anyway, shout out to Garrett Chow. That dude's dope. Um, yeah, for real. Big inspiration for me. Uh, I, I just love the way he rode um, in in the in, in Mash and everything that he did content wise. Uh, like I literally styled my riding after him as far as like. Um, like he's super smooth. Um, oh, like physically, like, so like how he physically, moves? yeah. Oh, I like like that. that was like when I watched. Um, and we we talked about this a lot too in our in our groups back then. But like we were like, um, we we're like, hey man, like when you know when when I'm captured on film riding, I'm like just smooth and I pick smooth lines and you know the anticipation of that and you know you can geek out on and do all that shit. But um, but like I just love the. It's, he was like fucking water and i was like man i want to do that so i started like you know just getting to it and, and whatever but shout out to, to garrett man because like when he when i hooked up with him not pause um but I, when i met up with him again in bay area uh, or connected with him in bay area like he he like was like just like all you guys were man like super inviting super helpful and wanted to help that next generation etc and like that's what you need man um so Good for you guys, man, because, like, you guys helped us out. Um, and uh, and we want to reciprocate that to everybody else below uh, – not below, excuse me. Um, that's coming Or just up. coming up, yeah. Yeah, coming up. Um, you know, yeah, you – I'll always remember, too, like, your style on a bike is – oh, we got a little – I got a little bit of that footage from when I filmed – because I was doing the videos then, and we filmed you with the last photo shoot in the headlands. The low? Yeah. Yeah, the low. That's what it was. Oh, that might have been the same as the lifestyle one. Yeah, that's when I almost died. Um, right, because the brakes. Dude, fucking Andrew stopped. I was like, "Go drive. Don't f- argue with this dude right now." Okay, let's tell the story. Oh so, my god. We were, <laughs> so this is how I became intimately um, connected with Josh Caffrey. Shout out to Josh Caffrey. Um, so we are going down the headlands. Andrew is driving. Um, Dustin's co-pilot. And and looking in the back and like you know directing, and then Josh is in the trunk oh, with yeah, the hatch sh- open shooting right. Of a We're minivan, going down, shooting yep, back. out of a minivan. We're going on the backside of Hawk Hill, and the whoever has been there, steepest of steep, the gnarliest hill. Um, there's a video of like these BM, BMX dudes with no brakes just completely getting super gnarly on that thing. Anyway, Whoa. gnarly ass descent. Um, long, bo- like crazy long borders and people oh, like that totally. do that shit. Cyclists go crazy on that thing. Anyway, we're, we're going down this thing. I'm doing my thing for the camera. I'm being mad aggressive and shit. Um, taking ridiculous corners, not touching my brakes. And mm. Andrew sees this dude in this Escalade. I see him too. I was like, oh shit. He's like stopped in the middle of the damn descent. Taking oh, yeah, and, photos of those. And this is a road that's just one road, one way. Yeah. Sorry guys. Yep. So one way, one road, no turnouts Nothing. or anything yeah. like that so and i think andrew saw last minute or whatever no i think and, he's he like pulled up to him and was like hey man you can't pull over here like why are you pulled over i think it's that was like, after though because <laughs> he like oh. i was behind him remember i was behind him and he like slammed on the brakes and i was like i can't stop <laughs> oh that feeling Fuck. so like i like just went <laughs> And I right think, into the truck. Yeah, dude. Right, like it launched me. Literally, like I just smushed Josh, and um, the bike was fine. Luckily, I think I, I averted. I was uh, uh, 
luckily I was skillful enough to like turn the bike so I wouldn't oh, so destroy wouldn't... the entire bike. Yeah. So I turned the bike a little bit, Ooh. it hit the shifter on the tail, and I just like just ended up um, you know, on top of Josh. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Josh was like, come on in, let me take yeah, it. Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, you're welcome for the soft landing. Or something like that. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, shout out to Josh, he's awesome. I forgot but, um, about that. Well, we we didn't lose Mark that day, thank you. Oh God. man, it was close. I'm <laughs> glad the cl- I'm glad the hatch was open. Yeah. It was, it was soft. That one went through the back window. But, and um, not like too low. Some decapitation. Like yeah. <laughs> I'd have been gnarly. I'd knock the damn headphones over. Fuck. Um yeah, man. So anyway, yeah, dude. So, uh, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed, uh, watching him ride and, um, uh, being able to have those experiences in the Bay area with all, like, in my opinion, like the prominent people in the cycling industry, as far as like creating and making, uh, creating and creating trends and creating, um, the aesthetic and the, the culture uh, and it was weird because like, it seemed like everybody that was doing that was in one area at the time, um, before people like started moving out of the Bay area too. Um, so it was, it was pretty dope, man. Yeah. Um, it was a good time. Special good time. time. Yeah. Special time. And then now I'm like entering like the third group of, uh, social circle with in, in LA and meeting all the people down here and, and how dope these people are. Um, it, the community is like awesome down here yes. my, you know yes. so um it's also massive um this place is ridiculously large so right. uh you would see like uh, there's like there's friends that have been on like um i don't know like 23 miles away from santa monica or the beach and like oh, i was like oh, i haven't been there in like a year and a half i've been to the beach in a while i was like damn oh, yeah. dude and they're like, you know, it's, it's here. Like you're pretty close to the beach and they haven't been, you know, cause That's it's like, funny. just such a massive area and it's a pain in the ass to get across. But, right. um, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's terrible. Um, but yeah, so yeah, man, that's kind of like me in a gist. Um, and, uh, I'm looking forward to continuing that and trying to make sure that like, if I don't ever return to like competitive cycling, I, I make sure that I use the opportunities that I'm granted to um, ensure that people uh, coming up um, have this, uh, the same or better opportunities that I had. So, um, and then like more, because totally. like I said, there's people that have, didn't have the social circles I had that afforded me opportunities to ride. Um, and they don't have that. So we need to make sure, like, just like how Manny's in, in UK is offering that to people there, um, we need to freaking figure out how to create that here. Um, and again, like, the accessibility to the athletes, the accessibility to these prominent people within cycling. Um, and, uh, yeah. And Justin, Justin Williams of Legion and Dante and, and, and myself talked about that too. And he's like, we're trying to make sure that they grant the access to these, these kids that are hitting them up constantly in the DM and trying to talk to them. And he's trying, they're trying to give as much of their time as possible. Obviously it's very difficult, um, but they're excited because the interest is there. Um, and that's the dope part. So trying to get that interest, keep like going and keep going and keep going and keep going. So um, yeah, it's dope, man. Um, I do have one question for you. Uh Uh-oh. I don't know. So to give you some context, at this particular – I'm 31. Okay. No, I'm 32. Damn. Oh, Oh, shit. Forgot how old I am. Your story's got holes in it already. Yeah. (laughs) I'm 32. (laughs) No, you know know the trick for that one? I really – I just say what year I was born. And then let them figure it out. Let them do the math. Yeah. That's perfect. Okay. Pro tip that is ingrained. Making a note. Because then you only uh, have to remember one number, and that yeah, number 80, doesn't change. Born in 87. Uh, yeah, there you go. So, yeah. So, um, at this point in my cycling experience, I'll call it that, um, I'm, like, kind of a little burned out. Ah, interesting. Totally. Right? Yeah, duh. So, like, it's hard to – people are like, uh, when we were going into quarantine, I was like, oh, shit, I'm about to ride hella. Like, I'm about to right. be on the bike. Um you know, not a whole lot going on because I, I do, uh, I do like, I coordinate events and, and, oh. and, and connect people. And that's not, 
what we're doing now. Right. So, You're like, cool. That's now writing. Uh, this yeah. that's writing. This could probably <laughs> also be writing. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. So yeah, man. Like, have you ever experienced like a burnout like that? And like, what did you do to like infuse like, more? F- like, because you have to. Yeah. Because you have to like, right? You have to make it fun again, right? Or make it uh, make it to a point where you want to get out and go ride your bike, and you want to or doing something different. And a lot of people have used gravel for that um, totally. solution. Um, but what do you think, Lango? Have you experienced that? I actually just recently, because of the pandemic, just totally started to hit this wall of just like, this fucking is not that fun. It feels chore-like. Like, uh, and I think it was a lot of just like not being able to ride with other people. Like yeah. all the solo riding is like, it felt very soul sucking to me. Just who cares? Like, yeah, I can go this far. There's no pushing. There's no like, you're like, I don't know. Maybe that's fine. You know, do something else. So, I mean, we kind of just started like riding with like a couple people here and there. And like that fuck man was like, Oh, like, and then also a massive thing that was happening solo and doing the same fucking routes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen much travel lately, but uh, I've literally doing the same exact route, like every time because there's nobody on that route. And yeah, worry about mean, masks or anything like that. So yeah, and you're like the time is good, like you know what to expect, like traffic, no traffic, exactly. So, you know. I mean, so I just like tr- shake that stuff up in any way that you can. Maybe it's doing the route in reverse, or maybe it's doing that route with one little dumb thing to it. You yeah. know, like. And then just like a bigger ride with some other people. I mean, events really totally help because then it's this thing like, oh, I'm and they can be self-imposed. Like, okay, I'm going to do 150 miles at the end of the month or whatever or bike packing or this thing like these little goals because then you're like, okay, now there's purpose and it's going to be different, which is purpose. So that's what I'm saying. Like and that's what a lot of athletes uh, or the athletes that I know, like hit me up to you about like, hey, um what, what, why do I go out and do this? You know, there's no, the season's mm-hmm. done. And they're like, oh man, you're right. Like what keeps you guys like training, you know? And it's like, damn, you're right. I was like, I don't even want to go out and just ride my bike just to ride my bike. And like, not even thinking about the athletes that are out there like, oh shit, there's most likely not going to be a season. So right. why am I training? What's the point? You know? Um, and they're like, and a lot of Legion guys are like, oh, I got to stay ready. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is dope. And it's like a testament to their determination and, um, but they have that fire. They have that fire. That, 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 that shit's man. burning. They're like, we gotta, it's gotta yeah, dude. Riot or it's gonna like everyone's trying to prove us wrong. Right. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. So um, yeah, so like I'm I'm struggling with that, and like today, um, it's fucking, it's like gnarly beautiful out. Oh really? In LA, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's like I don't know if you can see, <laughs> but anyway, it's fucking beautiful outside. Obviously, like almost every day. And I'm like, why right. am I inside? Um, and like, oh, wait, COVID, you know? Yeah. And, uh, Valid. You know? So, yeah. So I was like, wanted to see your input. But you're right, man. Like, uh, I did I did pick up a quarantine partner, but I had to fire him. Um, <laughs> he, I started, respect- he started riding with everybody else. I was like, oh. dog. Like, I was like, you cheating on me, bro. So I was like, yeah, like dirty bird. <laughs> yep. I was like, now I can't contact Trace. Now, you know, so. Uh, mm. Yeah, so you know, I had to fire. I picked up another one. But, oh, good. Well, you know what they fast. say? You know what they say? You know, rebound, <laughs> rebound. rebound. Yeah, it's always fun in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But oh. also, you know, like I, I don't think it always has to be big miles either. Like just satiating the thing and just riding a bike feels good. Like but cycling, I say this all the time: is mind, body, soul. So the more you do it, the more you're just kind of like. You know, even if it's like the same fucking route and it's yeah. it, whatever, it's still you get the endorphins and you're like, eh, you know, I guess I'm glad I, I did I it. I do know one thing that will make me hype and it's a present I got from BD. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Day. I don't know if I'm. Where, where's he? He's going to get it. All right. Ready? Ready I, for this? I know what it is. You know what it is? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Shit. 
I didn't know that. Sick. Oh yeah. So dope. That's cool. And scandium. Um, and little do uh, I don't think anybody knows that I when I was in Bay Area I got two track bikes stolen. When I was in the Bay. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Uh, bummer, dude. Just like locked up, you know, the usual lockup job you do and um, wow. and just gone, bro. So um, actually, one of, them's lock, one of them was locked up and the other one was out of the trunk of my car. Uh, uh, I had, like like they popped it? Yeah. Well, dude. not really. There's a, a super disappointing. Um, somebody left the, the car unlocked. <clears throat> anyway. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> yeah, so two track bikes gone. So I didn't have, I haven't had a track bike in a long time. Wow, that's, oh, dude, you should totally, that will start I think that will, yeah, I, I, fire. Think, I think that'll help out. And it should cost like, I don't know, it's, track bikes are pretty easy to get into these days. So I can just get like a, a wheel set for like 300 bucks or something. Yeah, you know, just get it going. And the other thing, you're not going to want to do big rides on that. Hell no, thing. but I mean, you know, if, if you wanted, you maybe. Could, but. And we, we used to do some crazy shit. Like we used to ride, uh, I don't know if you heard about this stuff, but we used to ride from Indianapolis to Chicago a lot. Whoa, um, what the Gnarly, fuck? dude. It's definitely on, not as gnarly as some people do, like on the West Coast. But there's like, always to, somebody gnarlier. There's always somebody gnarlier, but we used to ride track bikes to from Indy to Chicago, it was like 217 miles, mad wind. Whoa. We had the so we had the wind. We had like some yeah. Belgium. We had some like Belgium shit. We had the wind. We didn't have any elevation. Um, like our climbs, we were like, oh shit, this climbs overpass fifty feet. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like we just had fucking wind, and to the point where like you would come up on like instead of a climb or mountains, you would see wind farms and shit. Yeah. Oh, so, they had wind farms there too. Yeah, oh, super gnarly. Brutal. So yeah, it'd be it's brutal. So anyway, it was fun though too, because like there are times where we get like a fat tailwind and we're like crushing at twenty four, and we're just legs are just like, you know. So Wait, would you guys do that in one session? Yeah, one uh, eleven hours. Dude, Smash it, brutal. Bro. That's Br- insane. Brutal. I remember the first time we did, we went to we went um, we got there, we got to the pier, the Chicago pier, and. Uh, we we did something we probably shouldn't have done. We were like uh, caloric deficit, et cetera. Um, and start we, drinking the pier? <laughs> no, we jumped in the fucking yeah. Lake Michigan and that cold water hit our bodies, dude. Oh. That fucked our shit up. So did we it really? Like, yeah, we were just like, I was shaking and we were just like tripping balls, dude. So we, uh, <laughs> dude, I was like, what is happening to my body, bro? Like, yeah. cardiac arrest anyway so we like high it out of there tried to because it was like a weird body like we immediately got some food um but like we on the way there we were delusional we were like oh we gotta jump in the water as soon as we get there it's like a symbolic uh, symbolic you know it was a terrible mistake anyway <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that, those times are so fun man like shit um wait try, hey like Tell me, tell me about the tiny house real quick before we. Oh shit! Yeah, before we before we forget them. Tiny home. Um, we were in West Oakland. We were paying uh, um, arm and a leg for our little like apartment that we had. Um, Eliana was like on YouTube, and she was like, "Hey, uh, this is dope. Should we like? I want to build one." I'm like, "Oh what?" So, you know, I was super, I got curious about it. She started showing me videos. We, we, uh, we uh, started getting all up in it. And then we just jumped into it. So we went out to, so um, shit, where did we go? We went out, we found, it, found a, tra- uh, a tra- trailer bed with e-brakes, the whole setup. Oh, wow. Um, the weight that we needed. And uh, so we went and picked that up on Craigslist. So we drove out with the U-Haul truck because we we only have a four door sedan. Right. Picked up the picked up the trailer, um, drove the trailer back, and it was just parked outside in West Oakland. Super on the stuck. street. Like, on the street. Just I was like, like someone's about to steal. It. About to steal this shit. So we put the the locks and everything like that, and then Eliana got to work with trying to see if anyone was able to um, house us right. during the building. So we got in touch with like a couple of people, one of them, one of which was like a Berkeley kook, like tried and true Berkeley kook. And he was like, oh man, he was like, oh man, you can use my parking lot and 
Um, you know, he's, <laughs> I was like, come on, dog. Like, or like my driveway and his driveway is all like super destroyed. And, oh, you know, yeah. You're just like, this isn't a match. This isn't a match. Anyway, he had a friend that oh. um, that actually worked out for us. So he had a friend. He was like this crazy like engineer, doctor dude. Oh, or wow. um, PhD, like engineer guy. Um, and he worked for a place called Bear, which is Berkeley Engineering and Research. Um, and it was like a threshold testing. They do like big profile uh, structural integrity cases and shit like that. Oh, interesting. Um, super dope. And it was in Gil- the Gilmore District in North Berkeley. Um, so the whole thing Sick. was fenced in. They had access Perfect. to all this like machinery and power and the whole thing was gated. So we're like, dope. We, I had an interview with the guy, Dr. Stevick. Um, th- shout out to Dr. Stevick. I don't know, he's never going to see this. but <laughs> Super dope, dude. <laughs> He'll be like, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. That was uh, amazing. Good. It's great knowing you. Um, <laughs> anyway, I uh, charmed him up, did some dad jokes, um, told him all we were trying to do. Um, and then he allowed us, he gave us space to, to build it. He was like, he's like, how long do you need? I was like, I don't know, um, six months. Totally wrong. Um, but anyway, so, and he... Was, but he was like six months, whatever. Whatever, right? So wow. he, was, he was so dope, dude. It was like... The, it was That's like, so cool. It was so cool. Um, big break. Anyway, I started building it, and I have a, um, more of a background in um, carpentry and, like, house restoration. Not necessarily, like, Sick. building a f- fucking house, but I've wired a house before, built yeah. framing, etc. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's like, leaps and bounds ahead of a lot uh, of people. Yeah, <laughs> table saw and stuff like you know shit like that. Routing. Anyway, Sick. Um, we started building it. Um, unfortunately, we took some shortcuts um, and we decided not to purchase floor plans, which we probably, oh. in hindsight, we probably should have done because what we what I did is I used the engineers at the place, um, and then we just kind of freestyle. We just basically made a hitch style. Um, uh, a shed slash hitch style with a hitch style roof. Um, oh, like um, a lean to? It's a big ass box, basically. Oh, with, but like a, a gabled roof, I think it's not a gabled, called. but a um, lean yeah, to. Hitch. Yeah, lean to. Yeah. yeah. So, so we just we just built that on the thing Sick. and we kind of framed the inside, and then we um, once we built the basically just big ass box. Yeah. Um, we looked on the inside and we, uh, we calculated the weight distribution based on the trailer. Um, oh, and then wow. we just kind of like, and then I just kind of freestyled it after that. Um, we ended <laughs> up living, it, it took way longer than six months. They were dope. They didn't really care. Um, they, it was at to the point, it was to the point where they actually liked us being there because we were kind of like security. security. Someone's around. Yeah. And we cool. would like, they would leave shit open, Sick. doors open. So I would like when I'm walking the dogs, I would go out my little flashlight and I would like close doors and shit for them or um, close the main gate because everyone would leave and they would forget the main gate. Oh yeah, where they're like Mark's here. So the whole facility, and they, <laughs> yeah. apparently they've been they apparently they were doing that before we were there. Like just, oh. I was like just forgetful, and all these guys are like you know they they work these long ass days and then they're just blown out. Right. <laughs> so they're just like leaving shit open. So anyway. Um, they actually liked us there. Um, and it was kind of cool cause they were just like, um, it really didn't feel, it, we felt super sketched out, but they, at no point they, um, they were like, Oh, you guys need to leave. And this is ridiculous. Um, there was one hater, one guy mm. was a little bit of a hater, but he wasn't really like, he didn't, he wasn't the big boss. Yeah. Man. He has no pull. So you're like, yeah, yeah. Everybody else was fine. Um, so but, uh, you, you guys built it up and then started living in it in the same spot. In the same spot. Oh, sick. Um, and we cool. had um, we had power water. Wow. So you guys um, moved out of your, the the. Yeah, we ha- and we kind of had to. So um, um, unfortunately, we we left before we finished the tiny home. So we were like uh, very oh, slowly finishing shit. it uh, as we lived in it. And you know, I think everybody that is familiar with how that usually goes, uh, once you start living in something, the well, at least for us. Um, like the, the the progression slows down a lot. It's hard as fuck to work. It's on hard as fuck. Yeah, because like when you're not living in it, you're like, oh, I need to get up at six a.m. and drive to the fucking thing, and I'll put in the eight hours. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, we got tired of it. 
unfortunately. Um, How long did you live in it? Three years. So holy we shit, dude! Respect. We were in the uh, Bay Area for five years total. Two years West Oakland, and <clears throat> three years at the tiny home. And then uh, wait, no, did you guys have to pay rent at that spot? For the first year, no. Sick. That was a this building was, year. Yeah, and they Sick. were like. And then they then they were like, okay, well, it's definitely longer than six months. Um, right. Give us a little bit of money. How's two hundred dollars? Oh, but dude. then we paid two hundred bucks a month, Sick. and it was dope. Um, That's great. We didn't pay for power. Um, God, so awesome. It, was it, had, dope. it had water too. Yeah, it had water. Yep. Um, what the about- only bad the only bad thing is we did a composting toilet, so I had to get rid of that. Yep. And then we were down the street from Whole Foods, which is even worse. Like, so we were a walk away from Whole Foods, which kind of like it's expensive. Oh, um, it's just like there's where your rent money goes. Yeah, but you're eating healthy and it tastes eating good. Eating really so. good, yeah. So we're eating good. Um, but yeah, it was a crazy experience. And I wish like I think going through that, um, if we decide to do it again, we'll definitely do it legit um, or not even build it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just so. it's so I, I love hearing this because it's You were there because you, you came through and it was just like a, it's a lot of work, man. Um like well, you I said you stopped by on your last day. I think Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to see the thing. But also I, I love the story because the tiny house is I love these things that are in this category that I call romantic of things yeah. that everyone thinks are like so fucking great. Like bike packing's in that category, tiny houses are in that category, yeah. motorhomes, like camping these things are like oh it's so awesome they love to talk about it this and that but the reality of these things is it's insanity brutal. it's brutal we're it's, it was like you we it was like moments where like damn dude like we kind of feel homeless a little bit or like when you were living in it yeah when we first started out living in it, it wasn't really finished so it's oh, like damn, we're yeah. kind of like we're kind of like glamping it you know so mm-hmm. um you know but it was definitely an experience for sure and it did save us a lot of money yeah um, i bet like, I mean, going from like, uh, I think um, at that time, oh, so another reason we got pushed out too, because they increased our rent like crazy. So we were paying oh, like in West Oak, yeah, we were oh, in West, West Oakland, Oakland, we were paying, um, I forget what it was, like $1,300, which is like not bad at that time, mm-hmm. but it's a lot for West Oakland right. um, and the place that we had. And then they increased it like crazy because the, everyone was being pushed out of the city into oh, yep. West Oakland. And mm-hmm. that, I think if you go to West Oakland now, it's like freaking – it's probably totally – I haven't been there. I can't really speak on it. But, yeah, um, it's I bet probably Williamsburg, crazy. right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, let me – you know. Um, so we got – we had to get out of there. And then um, uh, – so we ended up there. We saved a bunch of money. So we went from like that to 200 bucks. And then, um, that's so and, sick. then Eliana, like she, she, she loves being warm. Um, and she loves the sun and she loves the beach. And if you know anything about the Bay area or the East Bay, you don't really get any of that. <laughs> but East Bay is kind of sunny. East Bay is sunnier. Sunnier. Um, yeah, sunnier, but like, you know, you can't go to the beach. You can go to the I beach. I mean, it's a project. It's a project. You can go to the beach. You can go to like, um, Stinson, which is a drive. To get like yeah, an actual fuck. beach, you know, actual beach, but that's like an hour and a half. And it's probably going to be cold. It's probably going to be cold. <laughs> and then you go to like, I don't know, the bay. And then you have a beach, but you can just play like um, with this little chicken nugget. And <laughs> you can't really get in, you can't really get into the water, you know. Um, so it's interesting, man. Like, um, and then my Midwest thing came up, and I was like, oh, I'm comfortable, whatever. And then Eliana was like, no, nah, this place sucks. So uh, no offense to anybody in the Bay Area. Um, or it's just time to change. It's time to change, yeah. And then uh, so um, she found the job, uh, same company, Rafa. Um, oh, sick. And then I applied for it, got it. They were sick. stoked. Um, then I came down here for like a month trying to find a place to live. Uh, stayed with Rio and Esteban. Shout out to those guys. I met them on IG and they offered me a place to Sick. crash. Sick. Internet's dope. Um, it is also undefeated, so don't say some bullshit. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or don't do any bullshit because the internet will get you. Um, but it's also really dope for interactions like that. So, um, 
shout out to those guys, man. Those guys were dope. Uh, but yeah, so found a place. Now we're in Santa Monica, chilling. Oh, cool. Um, living our best lives here. Wait, you, so did you guys? You guys must have gotten rid of the tiny house then. We did. We sold it. Like so, straight up Craigslist. Straight up, yeah. Well, Sick. not really. So one of the guys, one of the guys that worked for Bear. He um, he had a friend that would drive up and uh, have meetings or whatever, and he he kept on seeing it over and over again. And he just bought this uh, property in Pescadero. Oh, so he was sick. like, "Oh, I can't build anything the way it's zoned. Uh, I can't yeah. build anything on this land, but I can have something a temporary structure and then have everything plugged into it or whatever." Um, and then oh, he was wow. like, "Oh, I don't want to get a motorhome or anything like that, but this looks super dope." Cool. Um, so he picked it up, drove it down there. Um, and it's now in Pescadero somewhere. Um, so, and they're doing whatever Sick. they're doing with that. So, um, good you know. job. Cause I can so, see how you'd be, anyone would be like, fuck, how am I going to get rid of this giant thing? Dude, it was giant. You seen it. It was huge. Like we, when we started building it, it was like, it's like from, well, it's, it's max, it's max DOJ limitations. So it's eight, eight and 8.5. Eight and a half, eight, wow. like, almost eight and a half feet wide. So eight, eight, wow. eight feet, five inches, and then max height thirteen six. Wow. Um, and just massive, right? And then like seeing, you know, whatever truck you're pulling it, it kind of makes it look super tiny. And like, uh, we even moved it around the facility oh. to see what it looks like rolling, and it looks hilarious. It was just massive. So big, that. yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. We sold it, um, and then we were. We, I think we were relieved to. Uh, I can't really speak for Ellie, but I think we were relieved to get back to like normal-ish living uh, yeah. for a minute. You yeah, know, yeah, like and hot then, water whenever you want, and like yeah, like take a, a yeah, dump you, in a toilet, like exactly, and flush that <laughs> motherfucker. And You're like, like bye. <laughs> it's like I was like, oh my god, this is a toilet, you know. So three um, years. That's, three years bro yeah. that's massive if you want have you ever picked up um you know when you go and take winston for a walk and you pick up his shit yeah literally what i was doing yeah no i yeah. same with the camper van that's the yeah. that's the move you just that's the move man bag just, it and sag you know, it and you don't <laughs> or something yeah exactly bag it and uh, bob sag it you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you do it man you know you and you, uh, you really, you really learn a lot about yourself when you pick up after yourself. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> we're both not above doing such things. It's, no, it's, no, it's no. just a, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do, do. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, sorry, dude. I'm kind of getting loopy. But, uh, <laughs> Love it. But yeah, man. So it was, a, it was a great experience. Um, and then during all of that, obviously. Uh, you got you have all these other things going on like the cycling stuff and you know everything right. happening yeah. in the area. So um, it was great. It'll, it'll, it 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 definitely that cheaper rent it definitely allowed Eliana to stop work and cool. go back to school. Like she she went and did this program um, Mission U for like business analytics and she was Sick. able to go to school and I was like able to support us Sick. with what I had made. Um, that's and awesome. uh, it was, yeah, it, it allowed us to do quite like a, few a level up thing or leverage. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. And then now like she's super entrepreneur and she's like smashing it. And then um, yes. I'm just here doing, doing what I'm doing. Um, at least until COVID uh, relaxes and then um, I can go back to what I normally do, but I don't even know what capacity that's going to be. Um, because even after yeah. shit calms down, which is not anytime soon, because now we're, we're even higher than we were initially as far as cases um yeah dude dude it's crazy um anyway if that even gets any breath of normalcy we'll have to see what it looks like because we still got to wait for vaccines and et cetera, et cetera. so um i don't know my job will probably morph a little bit um into more like act you know marketing well it's already marketing but more like um i don't know uh, I would love to do like content creation or um, relationships and shit like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyway, um, yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell, dude. Uh, love it. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to. I'm glad we got to reconnect because I think 
I, what I need to do is do more of this. And the first step was putting together that let's be friends again, zoom call with all my friends. Um, and I might actually do it with like each group of friends. So I might see if I can get like a, let's be friends again, Bay area or some shit like that. Um, but I encourage, like, I encourage all of you guys out there too. like, shit, if you haven't, if you miss people, shit, pick up, pick up the phone, do some shit like this. Do it like a Zoom call. Or even everybody. like just Google. send a text message. Send a text. Um, hit the DMs. Yeah. Uh, you know, send a story, some shit like that. I don't know. Like, like, just like what about, re- you know, like you, you go through your day, you'd be like, oh, you think of this person. You're like, Joe Blow. You're like, oh, yeah. And then you go about your day, you're like, whatever. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of a cool, like a cool practice could be. Maybe we could try and do this for our, like hold ourselves as like this thing we want to try to do commit to this is when you think of that person just like say what's up send them something because it's like yep. a cool way to just be like just connect you know it doesn't have to be a big thing it's just like no, hey thinking about you or hey you're cool whatever yep, or like sending them a photo like um uh shit let me uh like some poop in a bag yeah <laughs> oh with dustin hey hey mark thinking about you safe, like safe way <laughs> 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 so good dude that's so good you think i'm shit no no dog just like you know thought about you reminisce <laughs> you know uh, anyway yeah so should do that man um but uh but yeah love it that's that's, that's me man and uh yeah nothing nothing crazy special just like trying to do my thing and trying to help other people i'm like more focused on um i love helping people and uh sometimes and i want to put myself in a position where i can help more people and help them better um so yeah man um and reciprocate a lot of the help that i got over the years from all you guys and um yeah that's why i'm gonna continue to do uh, yeah. you know see what i can do and continue to get better and get more creative etc so and i see i see all your comments um I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do as far as uh, creating content, either whether it's like Patreon or YouTube, or whatever. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do and what the what it would look like. Um, and uh, everyone's like, "If you want to do something, do it now." Yeah, I want to, but I want to make sure that I have a channel where because um, I'm super random, um, and I'll just do like I'm a little bit of a po- I'm a pocket knife. And um, if I do like just something cycling or just something DIY or whatever, um, I'll also have other things going on. So uh, I might just do like, I don't know, a Swiss Army Knife channel with playlists to all these random shit. Um, oh, sick. But we'll see. Um, I already filmed some stuff. Um, oh, really? Yeah, dude. Like for a bunch of like, Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people know me for like taking care of my shit. So I, I've done a lot of like DIY um, cleaning yeah. things with like equipment and um, like masks and stuff like that. I make masks too. Yes. I started doing that for people. Um, so we'll figure it out, man. Like I'm, I'm still figuring it out, but I do see those. So wait, you got a You got a YouTube channel then? Uh, it's on there, but there's nothing really on there. There's like my, there's like a roller sprint that I did years ago and like a oh, special Wait, no, just, was, just say yes, and it's the greatest place in the world, and you can find yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yes, you can find it. Um, I think it's just under my name. <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> or my IG. Oh, yeah, just uh, Google. Yeah, uh, for yeah. sure you can find Mark. Mark on Mark IG. Mark Allen, Alford. Yep. Yep. Alford. You there see you the name. His name's right Mark Allen Alford, yeah. What the fuck is my pointing? <laughs> it's right. Jesus Christ. There it's next go. to his head. There you go. You got it figured out. <laughs> no. Yeah, you can find me on IG. Um, and his, his photos and stuff are legit. There's a lot of good cycling stuff. Oh, thanks, stuff. man. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, I do more if, if you like goofy shit, and I do more of that goofy stuff on um, my stories. But um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good so, stuff yeah there. that's where I do the, good, yeah, the more candid um Oh, I totally forgot for a while. You, I feel like you were doing, I don't even remember exactly what it was, but I was really hyped on some story stuff you were doing and it was more like candid or it was really funny. And I was like, yo, you need to do more of this. Oh yeah. I don't even remember exactly what it was. I do. It was, I think it was Vine and I was posting it 
I was posting my Vine stuff on Instagram, and it was just me being me, just being goofy as shit. Dude, and it's like, awesome. Like, I did this video with Corbin, like, you know, taking himself to the park. Um, yeah, Because I didn't totally. have time. Or, like, I would actually – so I uh, I had this thing. If, if you guys have followed me on my um, Instagram, you notice that my profile is a black circle. And, um, or it's, a, like it's my, a black ring. It's just a black ring. Not, not yeah. solid. It's like a... Yeah, it's not solid. Yeah, it's a black it's ring. White with a black I say black color. circle, but um, it's, it's kind of like yeah. my brand. Um, yeah, that's so, like a, and your that's, logo, your yep, icon. That's my logo. So that's what I put on like a lot of the... I think you're... And also, I think you're also referring to like these little clips I, I, I film yes. um, just with my iPhone. Um, and they were just More super fun. More personality. Like anything yeah, to yeah. pull out. Your personality is so much fun to watch. That's dope. That's like, I didn't know that. Like, people, It's awesome, you know, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please make more of that. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. People do say that. I need, I, th- I definitely need to, I think. Um, I mean, only, only if it feels like something you want to do. Cause you know, yeah, but that's, that's another thing too. Cause like, it's weird. Cause, uh, um, obviously we're having this conversation and, uh, I didn't even think like, it's, it's definitely going way over, over time, but like, I can talk to people forever and I could be super social and, and energetic and everything like that. But I'm also like uh, an introvert too. You totally. know, it's weird. Like totally. it, um, and well, it's, it's, you don't have to always be on all the time. I identify with that too. Yeah. But, you know, when you're yeah. on, you're like, okay, it's, it's on. And then it's almost like a, a glass of water. You, you're like on energy kind of runs out and you're like, okay, this needs to fill up again. And then we can, we can do it all over. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing that's cool about when you're the one controlling the camera is you have control over when you're on or off. On and off. You're right. You're right. You're not um, like a, you're not trapped like you are right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm like, you know, I'm being me. Um, no, I, mean, I, I, I definitely like, yeah, I definitely understand that. And then like getting over like my, it's weird because like I do these shoots and everything, but then I'm like, weird about me uh my face in front of a camera like if you look at my instagram there's no selfies or anything like that it's all like other people either sh- either shooting me or me shooting somebody else uh, yeah but that's like a style like i don't have any of that shit like eh. yeah yeah it's like yeah i mean <laughs> I, I in a way i i uh, uh i have respect for you know people that are comfortable doing that I'm yeah. not that comfortable doing that. I, I respect that because I'm, I'm not comfortable with that either. But, um, but yeah, like, I think uh, it's just, like, Eliana's just like, who cares? Like, just do it. It's like, you're right. So. And, you know, this is a, I like telling this to people too, is, again, if there's a desire to make content and put stuff out there, that's number one. If that's a yes, then I say, do, just do it in the beginning because, in the beginning, no one's fucking paying attention. No you, one's watching. You have yeah. to earn that attention. Yeah. And to do that, you got to produce a bunch of stuff. And the and more you that, produce, yeah. the yep. better you get. And then the more that the people will start watching. And it, it totally just like, it works with itself then. And I think by that time, you're comfortable, right? Exactly. Being in front of the camera. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And I think like watching, um, watching your videos, man, like I think you've, definitely from the beginning up until now you you like you just you've you have you've been comfortable in front of it in my opinion like there's no either you do a good job hiding it or um it, you, like you just be you're just you because like i've seen it just being with you or riding with you you just like you know you, you capture what you see and then like i realize what you're seeing and um you're just being yourself and it's like quirky and goofy and fun so so yes. this, I like that you pointed that out. So th- that's something that I think you would be able to kind of utilize or capitalize on also is I'm almost tr- – tr- I always want to uh, – genuineness again. I always want to try and get that genuineness out of myself and I know it's there and sometimes it's forced and sometimes it's not. But you're kind of always – Oh, I'm like t- kind of talking myself into a corner. It, it's no, you're no, basically you're looking for that. Like the, it's not so much an act or a thing. It's like, Hey, I want to try and set my scenario up to be as, as myself as I can. Got so it. you're kind of yeah. like, it's not like, Oh, is that, you know, am I supposed to be like this? Is that? It's like, no, no, no. Like make it like comfortable or fun or goofy. Like, yeah, dude, if you, oh my God, I want to do a ride with you and like oh, the so fun. singing yeah. and the dancing. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, maybe it'll happen. You never know. 
Um, but next best oh, thing, you know what? What's that? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I, I want to see you doing that on your yeah. own, like walking yeah. the dog or doing yeah, whatever, <laughs> everything, anything. It's just the, it's the personality, you know. But. Oh yeah, dude. I do some goofy shit when no one's watching. So, um, but yeah, like you know what popped in my head? Um, I think you had Chaz on here not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, I met him. I don't think you're gonna remember this. I met him for the first time, and I met um, Steve mm. Storts yep. for the first time uh, together uh, in 2009 track day at Nax in Boston. Oh, sick. and I met them during a sprint. Um, Chaz dusted me because I had uh, I'm gonna make an excuse because I had pedals and straps, and he had like clipless. Oh, so he's just um, goom. Oh, he was gone. Um, but it was super cool because like. They were talking shit, but it was like friendly talking shit. And then I got to know Steve a little bit more because uh, that same night we, uh, sorry, I'm just saying this random memory, but that yeah, night yeah, we uh, we we had this Monopoly alley cat, and we Whoa. pulled. We both ended up at the same checkpoint somewhere in the city, um, <laughs> and we both uh, pulled uh, go to jail cards. So it was like fuck. So we had to ride all the way across downtown to the bay, Boston Bay, and we were in jail. And we picked another card, and one of the um, options to get out of jail was to strip butt naked and jump in the Boston Bay. And this is like midnight. Um, At what time of year? Uh, this was like summer. Okay. So it was, it was warm Oh, it's probably warm And now. super gross because the Boston Bay is gross. <laughs> so just me meeting Steve that day at track day, and then like um, we're both like, you know, there's like three of us butt ass naked oh, running you, across the pier. You all did it. Yeah, we all did it. Running across the pier, butt ass naked, jumping from the pier, not realizing that, hey, wherever we jump off at, we're going to have to get back up. We jumped off at a horrible spot. Oh. So we both jumped off, butt ass naked. We were trying to get out, and it was like a ledge, like a straight up ledge, and with these cracks, but they're all like algae. So Slimy. We <laughs> Help! And I'm naked. And that's how I met Steve. Um, <laughs> so we both coordinated, uh, butt ass naked, coordinated uh, to get out of the Boston Bay, and then we rode together all wet after we put back our clothes on. Um, oh God! And then we continued. Uh, we placed pretty pretty good on that alley cat, but it was pretty. It was the funniest shit. Um, and it was like that's how wild that those times were. Like you would just do crazy shit. Like it was so, but it was so much fun. Yeah. It wasn't like mad dangerous or anything like that. It was just right. fun. Really. Yeah. It's um, like good, clean enough fun. Clean enough. Boston yeah. Bay clean. Yeah. And like um, everyone's always drunk too. Yeah. Everyone's mad drunk. It was not that, you know. <laughs> but yeah. So meeting, meeting Chaz and, and Steve. And that was like when they, um, they, they were, they were coming up and then like they, you know, both of those guys got, uh, uh, like just blew up and it was cool seeing those guys following and everything like that and it was good dudes man so yeah um yeah so that was dope anyway that just uh i randomly like just remember that because uh, i remember that you had chaz on here too um Sick. yeah so i'm like i'm i'm interwoven within this whole fixie thing but just like kind of behind the scenes a little bit so well not anymore now everybody <laughs> will know <laughs> everyone <laughs> Do- dozens of people will now know dozens of people yeah <laughs> well maybe uh, maybe that's like a good uh you know maybe we should end it on that huh yeah you know that but hey man like uh thanks for having me on dude this is dope dude um, this is awesome yeah more so just to freaking talk to you i'm just like i just use this as an excuse to talk to you for this long um, same yeah yeah okay. um and uh yeah it was great dude like uh, and I'm glad you were able to hear more of my story. I know we've talked before and you had snippets, but like, not, I, you know, I just went through my whole freaking life, basically. I love uh, it. Yeah, it's like perfect. A, like a gist. Uh, I mean, how often does that happen with people, you know? Not a whole lot, honestly. Yeah. Like, maybe bestest of friends or whatever. But uh, Right. But and yeah. then it's always like, dit, 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 yeah, dit over kinda, like Because years. honestly, like, I think the way humans are too, like, we kind of nitpick the best things in our life and tell people. Sure without sure. telling them like the struggles and what we'd messed up on and stuff like that, or just like the whole yeah. picture. Which is so. interesting because those are, those are pretty important things because those things, especially if there's a, a platform to tell other people, those are the things that can help other people. Correct. Exactly. Um, and it, and it, it tells a better picture of how, um, 
especially during your formative years, it tells a better picture of how you developed into who you are right now. So um, right. it's super important. Um, but yeah, man, this is great. That was awesome. Miss, I miss you, dude. I miss um, you too, bud. Hey, should we do the I, high five? Heck yeah. Hold on. Wait, let me look. All right, hold on. Wait, wait, God wait. damn it. This I think it's going No, no, no. Way. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Three. One, oh, yeah, Conic. One, two, three. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Everything's Been Done podcast. We couldn't do it without you. I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. If you enjoyed this on any of the audio platforms, please let's shake the system and give it a, a five star thumbs up positive rating thing. And I'll see you next week with another wonderful guest. Much love and respect. Good night.